Section 19 of Birds, Volume 2, Number 6, December 1897. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Valentina Vicelli. The Yellow Breasted Chat. A common name for this bird, the largest of the warblers, is the yellow mockingbird. It is found in the eastern United States, north to the Connecticut Valley and Great Lakes, west to the border of the Great Plains, and in winter in eastern Mexico and Guatemala. It frequents the borders of thickets, briar patches, or wherever there is a low, dense growth of bushes. The thornier and more impenetrable, the better. After an acquaintance of many years, says Frank M. Chapman, I frankly confess that the character of the yellow-crested chat is a mystery to me. While listening to his strange medley and watching his peculiar actions, we are certainly justified in calling him eccentric, but that there is a method in his madness no one who studies him can doubt. By many observers, this bird is dubbed clown or harlequin. So peculiar are his antics or somersaults in the air, and by others, mischief-maker, because of his ventriloquistic and imitating powers, and the variety of his notes. In the latter direction, he is surpassed only by the mockingbird. The mewing of a cat, the barking of a dog, and the whistling sound produced by a duck's wings when flying, though much louder, are common imitations with him. The last can be perfectly imitated by a good whistler, bringing the bird instantly to the spot, where he will dodge in and out among the bushes uttering, if the whistling be repeated, a deep-toned emphatic tack or hollow resonant meow. In the mating season he is the noisiest bird in the woods. At this time he may be observed in his wonderful aerial evolutions, dangling his legs and flirting his tail, singing vociferously the while, a sweet song different from all his jests and jeers, and descending by odd jerks to the thicket, after a few weeks, he abandons these clown-like maneuvers and becomes a shy, suspicious haunter of the depths of the thicket, contenting himself in taunting, teasing, and misleading, by his variety of calls, any bird, beast, or human creature within hearing. All these notes are uttered with vehemence, and with such strange and various modulations as to appear near or distant, in the manner of a ventriloquist, in mild weather, during moonlight nights, his notes are heard regularly as though the performer were disputing the echoes of his own voice. Perhaps I ought to be ashamed to confess it, says Mr. Bradford Torrey, after a visit to the Senate and House of Representatives at Washington. But after all, the congressman and feathers interested me most. I thought, indeed, that the chat might be well enough have been elected to the lower house. His volubility and waggish manners would have made him quite at home in that assembly, while his orange-colored waistcoat would have given him an agreeable conspicuity. But, to be sure, he would have needed to learn the use of tobacco. The nest of the chat is built in a thicket, usually in a thorny bush or thick vine five feet above the ground. It is bulky, composed exteriorly of dry leaves, strips of loose grape vine bark, and similar materials, and lined with fine grasses and fibrous roots. The eggs are three to five in number, glossy white, thickly spotted with various shades of rich reddish brown and lilac. Some specimens, however, have a greenish tinge, and others a pale pink. End of section 19. This recording is in the public domain.